Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode two of Pokemon Cav Coliseum. Here, in our first uh, in our first episode, we managed to uh, pick up our partner, our uh, sidekick, so to speak, Garish, who's sitting right here with us here. I uh, tweaked around some graphic settings as well, so we should have some adjustments there as far as that's concerned. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get on into it here. I'm gonna bump up my audio settings here just a tad, so you, I should be able to hear a little bit better here. Alrighty, that should work a lot better. It's gonna be a little bit sensitive, uh, but hey ho, it's uh, what the nature of the game. I turned up audio settings as well. Stuff should be a little bit louder all around, really. So last we left off, uh, we went up to the mayor's house and we triggered the conversation with Nascower, is his name. He's a mysterious, mysterious shady dude. Uh, we never, we didn't actually go into the mayor's house. Uh, this is the pre-gym. We talked about that a little bit. So let's actually visit the mayor and see what he's got for us. Look at this humble old man. Mayor Escade. Okay. Escade? Escade? How do you pronounce that? Uh, I don't know. Escade over here hitting on Garish. Garish saw a peculiar Pokemon. A Pokemon that gave off a black aura. Ooh. It was like a fighting machine. And the Pokemon would attack people. Ooh. If that were true, that would be truly frightening. It's a little hard to believe, though. <sighs> so, because she saw, because Garish saw the Pokemon, uh, they were like, hey, you, come here. Let me whisper in your ear, and they took they took uh, Garish hostage, basically. The mayor's gonna order an investigation. Good, good. Give him some time. Cool, cool. This is the Pokemon Stadium. Okay. Sure, why not? Uh, I'm gonna browse his house real quick first. Obviously, that's that's what everybody does when you first get in. You know, you just have to browse their house. Oh, lovely little lady up here with a kimono. <coughs> Excuse me, lady. Garish is not my girlfriend. He is my companion, my friend, a good good man to be around. I believe you have it quite wrong here, Garish. Look what you've done to this entire series. <laughs> All right, let's get on out of here. He said go to the Pokemon Stadium. We're gonna check that out. I know we said uh, things I want to get done today in this episode. I want to check out the pre-gym. I want to see what that's all about. Maybe get one or two battles in. And uh, yeah, basically get the hell out of this town. Do everything that we can in the town. Talk to everybody. Wait, what? Team Snaggle's hideout was blown up. Okay. Oh, no. okay, cool. Sweet. Let's go on into Fennec Stadium here. They told us to check out Fennec Stadium because we're trainers, obviously. Take part in the challenge? Sure. Oh, it's already started. Okay. You get TMs for winning. Uh, so this is what Coliseum's all about, really, in the end game. It's all about these Coliseum battles, quote-unquote, the stadium battles, that kind of stuff. Uh, bring your best team to the fight kind of thing. Which we will be doing as well. We're going to knock out all the Colosseums in their single and double battle uh, variants here. And it's going to be very, very intense. I'm still deciding whether or not I want to do it um, in the story and have the Nuzlocke rules apply to it or out of the story. It just depends on how it goes the first run in. But we'll talk to this lady here behind the desk. Current challenge has already started. Okay. All right. Well, guess we got to dip on out of here then. Look at all these bald hooligans. Hey, Genki, we finally found you, you double-crossing traitor. That's what you'd have to deal with if I voice acted this entire thing, by the way. The 
infiltrator. <laughs> Obviously. He's from Team Snagum, just like us. I don't deny things, so yeah, obviously I'm a member of Team Snagum. It's a, that's a little shocking. That's all Garish has to say. We just told the Garish that we are part of the largest criminal organization in the region, and all Garish has to say is that it's a little shocking. <laughs> Pokeballs are converted. Snag balls that can steal Pokemon from their trainers in battle. Okay. What do you mean by creeps? Oh, cool. So they're in battle us. Nice. Team snag them whacking. Shit's wacky, yo. He has a corefish and a coffin. Okay. Trusty Umbreon and Espeon duo here. Oh, Umbreon's level 27. I need to fix that in the tracker then. So, Corefish is a water type Pokemon, and Coughing is a poison type Pokemon. Uh, Corefish is weak to grass, electric, uh, and I think that's it. Grass, grass and electric, yeah. Coughing is going to be weak to ground, psychic, and. I think that's it for it. Yeah, ground and sidekick. So Espeon's gonna be make quick work of that uh, coughing, and Umbreon's gonna whittle away at the corefish here. Boom! There's a coughing down, and Umbreon's gonna gain some XP as well as Espeon, of course. Umbreon's going to go ahead and whittle away at this core fish before we get our powerhouse in there. Umbreon's actually doing pretty decently as far as attack goes. Ooh, and we got a flinch off, meaning he skips his turn. Nice. Look at that. No damage. There we go, make quick, quick quick work of this fool. He can't really do much of anything, really, so we're good. You are not good enough, my friend. You just got mollywopped into oblivion. Man, they really want the snagging machine back. I don't know why. Former Team Snagum. Haha. I am Garish's gallant prince who rescued him when he was in trouble. She wants us to go shopping for some Pokeballs. Remember what I told you guys about the Ore region and how it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any wild Pokemon in its region? So they don't have a need to sell Pokeballs, right? So now we're going to go check out the shops here and see if we can find any uh, any uh, shenanigans as far as Pokeballs are concerned. And, yep, you talk to this hooligan over here. Outskirt stand. Okay, there we go. So yeah, go to the guy in the outskirt stand. That's the only place you will ever get any of your Pokeballs from unless you find them in the field, which is kind of weird that you'd find Pokeballs. I mean, it makes sense, but it's kind of weird at the same time. So we're going to head on out. We're going to go to the outskirt stand. Then we're going to talk to the hooligan over here and see if he's got any Pokeballs for us to buy. There's Mr. Willy. Yo, 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 what's up, family? Hey, is he gonna give us some Pokeballs for free? I think he, yep, there we go, five Pokeballs. 
This is before they started giving you like 30 like they do nowadays in other Pokemon games. All right, what's he got? He's got Great Balls as well. Let's buy... Oh, I can only buy two of them, damn it. I should have saved my money. What can I sell? I probably don't need 15 potions. Uh, I'm kind of in the range where super potions are the common. So we'll sell 10 of them. Baba Booey. That allows us to get at least four Great Balls. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, can I sell anything else so I can at least have a solid five? I'm gonna sell five super potions. I don't think I'm gonna need any at the start here like that. So we got that going for us. And there we go. Oh, I can buy three more. Let's do it then. Buy three. Save money. What's that? Baba booey. We're done here. Good. Let's get on out. We got our Pokeballs, we're good to go. Let's head back to Fennec City. A whole lot of scary men came here, huh? Those two creeps who took off in the truck. Oh, cool. Those hooligans are here. Let's go mess with them real quick. Like, I'm gonna heal my team real quick because I realize I haven't done that yet. So we'll heal up real quick and knock it on out and get on going. And with any game, it's going to give us a tutorial about capturing Pokemon. I'm gonna touch up on that as we go. But uh, it's it's gonna be pretty simple it's basics, really. Uh, once uh, you've caught your first Pokemon, you pretty much know how to catch everything. So it's not like it, there's some super secret method to it. It's really, really simple. Uh, it's a little bit harder in Colosseum, but uh, because everything's a double battle. But it uh, it works out pretty well in the end. So I said it's at the mayor's house. So let's knock that out real quickly. What's up, fools? And here's the main man of the hour, Master Mirror B. I would love to just voice act Mirror B. That's that's all I want to do. <laughs> oh man. Just like the just the flamboyant attitude that Mirror B presents is amazing. Garish could see things, okay. B is going to go back to Pyrite Town. Got it. Mirror B's theme is the best theme in any video game in the history of video games. <laughs> and all those little peons there. And we got these two hooligans. Okay. What's this guy? Folly? Folly wants to try to mess with us again. He's going to He's gonna get molly whopped real quick. We're gonna just wipe the floor with him. A little bit different. He's got a Wizmer and a low Ted to start with. I think he has three Pokemon to start with, actually. Or is it only two? Let's see. Nope, it's only two to start with. So, what if his Wizmer, something, I don't know, something happened to it or something? But he's got a low Ted instead now, so. There we go. Uh, we're gonna destroy. We're going to target both of them here. Lotad is water grass, I want to say. Let me pull up my decks real quick on my phone. Yes, I do have a Pokédex on my phone. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where it is? is it at? There it is. Doo -doo -doo. Lotad. Yes, Lotad is water grass. Water grass is a pretty annoying type to deal with. Um, 
It's hard to figure out, like, what it's weak to and whatnot. So, let's see what we got. So, it's weak against flying, poison, and bug. I mean, none of which we have, obviously, but uh, we're going to clean these two up pretty quickly here. So, Umbreon gained some XP there, Espeon gained some as well, good, good. And Umbreon's gonna finish this fight up real quick, like. And we're good! We made a folly out of folly once again. <laughs> oh! Kill me for my puns, please. fight as well. Trudley, huh? Okay. You know, back in the day, I used to think that hat that Trudley wears was was Trudley's actual hair. It confused the hell out of me. So he's got a Duskull and a Spinarak. So we're seeing some more type variety here. Duskull is a ghost type Pokemon, and Spinarak is Bug Poison. So Bug Poison does a really good job at making sure that Espeon can't really do too much of it. However, this Duskull is about to get Mollywalked by Umbreon with Bite because Dark is super effective against Ghost, so this will be pretty fun here. Um, I'm also gonna I'm gonna put up a Reflect real quick just to help out Espeon here. Espeon took a little bit of damage in that first battle, and we haven't had a chance to heal yet because we're still in battle. Boom! There goes the Duskull. Oh, it's gonna live. Okay. Uh, Ghost is physical in this generation, so it's going to. Uh, do a number on psychic type Pokemons, which I don't really want to have happen too bad. Ooh, Nightshade at level 25. So Nightshade's interesting move. It'll always do the amount of it'll always do damage equal to its uh, level. So it's level 25, so it's gonna do 25 points of damage. Alright, so we got that reflect up. Um, let's go ahead, we'll use return on the spinner rack here. It's not stab and it's using its attack stat, but Espeon's a pretty heavy hitter, so that should do some nice damage there. Duskull's gonna go down here pretty easily there. A little bit, I think I was a little bit too worried there. Now we're gonna have a little bit of a conundrum here, because this Makuhita is a fighting type Pokemon. And Garish is gonna be triggered here. That's the Pokemon with the black aura from it. So that's the one that was seen attacking people. <laughs> okay. There's no other choice. Get that Pokemon back. So he wants us, Garish wants us to capture the Makuhita, which we will do. As I was saying, Makuhita is a fighting type Pokemon. Fighting is super effective against dark types here, but Umbreon's got enough, of de enough defense, and we have a reflect up that he can't really do too much. However, we want to be careful with Espeon. Um, Espeon may quite just absolutely destroy this Makuhita. Yes, it's four levels higher than Espeon, but Psychic is super effective against fighting, and that's something we're going to have to be careful of here as we go into this. So, get rid of the spinner rack here, we'll do some light work there. Um, Umbreon's going to use Secret Power just so I can gauge damage here. I don't want to use anything stab and, and afflict too much damage on this Makuhita. And there's the Vital Throw. That's going to that's gonna leave it. Oof. That left more of a mark than I thought it would. This is going to be interesting. I might want to just capture this thing right off the rim here. Let's see. Um, I'm going to Secret Power him one more time. And we're going to throw a Pokeball. So the basic gist of Pokemon is... When you want to capture a Pokemon and you want to get it into the red zone of its health, 
and then you want to inflict, and then uh, particularly you want to try to inflict some sort of status condition, albeit uh, typically paralysis and sleep are the two main ones you want to inflict. Uh, because obviously with burn and whatnot, if the Pokemon faints, you cannot capture it. That's the big drawback of it. And you'll see um, Shadow Pokemon, such as this Makuhita here, have a move on them that does recoil damage to themselves. And that can be frustrating to deal with on top of if you use a status condition like a burn or a poison, where it will do damage every turn. It could lead to the Pokemon fainting before you get a chance to capture it. So we're going to go in, we're going to capture this guy real quick. Uh, I'm not going to let him fool around too much here. Now, unfortunately, uh, it's only been a day or so since the post has been up, so nobody's claimed the name for Makuhita, who will become Hariyama, uh, if anyone would. Uh, the link to the post is going to be down in the description below. Go ahead and do that. And boom, Makuhita was caught, and we just ended a battle just like that. You just, all you have to do is just steal their final Pokemon. Like that's, that's kind of the way I would love battles to go. Like I don't even want to fight you. I'm just gonna steal your Pokemon and call it a day. You know? Snagged my Pokemon. Yep, 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 yep. We did. And now they're gonna run off. Cool. All right, so now we are the bad guys being the good guys by snagging, by doing the bad thing against the bad guys. Good. The smaller snag machine is compact enough to be carried by a single person. Okay, so it's going to tell us everything that uh, we already knew. Good. Cool. Let's proceed. Now, I'm going to heal up real quick. Oh, look at that little hooligan on the, on the side there, being a hooligan. I'm going to heal up real quick, um, use the PC just so I can save my items for when I'm actually like in the field. That's going to be the challenge. Um, obviously a PC is not going to be everywhere. I could do the exploit where I uh, deposit my Pokemon, exit the PC, or exit the uh, computer, and then um, go back in and then withdraw my Pokemon, but I'm not that scummy. We're not going to do that today. But let's take a look at our boy Makuhita, who has now joined the party. He's temporary in the party. Uh, as you can see, the screen's a little bit different than what we saw with uh, Espeon here. So Espeon, as you can see, we have the experience bar. We can see its nature, all that kind of stuff. With uh, with Makuhita, we can't. So uh, his ability is Guts, which is good. So it'll up attack when his uh, HP is low. He's got a really, really high attack, which is awesome, but his other stats are kind of garbage compared to if you see our Espeon and Umbreon here. Those stats will improve with time, of course, uh, but yeah, Makuhita is definitely a glass cannon, much like Espeon is. You see we have the heart gauge down there. It's got, um, it's completely filled right now, so it's that means it's, it's shut. You see we nicked off a little bit of it by just walking around with it. We'll talk more about ways to open the heart gauge later, but basically we won't be able to nickname this Pokemon until we purify it, quote unquote, which we'll talk about later. Right now his only move that he has is Shadow Rush. Uh, like I said, Shadow Rush, it's a very, very powerful move, but it does recoil damage, so that's, um, that's uh, the one downside of it. There's Makuhita. Welcome to the party, my man. Alright, so we've healed up. We've done everything. Um, do, 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 do. And now we've, we're kind of blockaded in the city here. So one thing I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to see if I can still uh, do these battles. Now that we have a third team member, we can, uh, we can take this area on. Okay. So we're going to do that right now. Oh, we're facing four trainers. I thought we were just facing one. Okay, this is going to be um, very intense. And we're taking on some grass type Pokemon to start with. Okay. So I think it's going to be grass, fire, water, and some other typing. Probably rock, ground. 
Espeon, Espeon, take care of the work here. And we're gonna wipe the floor with these fools. Ooh, they're actually on par with us. That's a little troubling. Okay, we'll deal with it. Grass is physical or is special in this generation, so I don't. I'm putting a reflect up in case they want to use any physical type moves, like normal moves or something like that. It's always nice to just have that defense layer up. Ooh, nice, a crit there. Almost uh, almost with the Oko. It's gonna use Tail Whip, it's gonna lower our defense. So luckily we did get that uh, luckily we did get that reflect up to help boost our defense a little bit there. And now we need to take care of the Sun Current, because it's currently using growth, meaning it's going to buff its attack. Oh, I meant to do confusion. Oh well, the Sun Current's gonna be able to get off an attack or another move. Two crits in a row from Umbreon, that's really nice actually. And Umbreon is now level 28. Good, good. I should have put Makuhita up front. Um, we need to knock out this Sun Current like right now. I think we're going to be able to take care of it. Do, 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 do. Down and it goes. Alrighty. That is Sun Current taken care of, and that's this trainer down. No health lost. Good. Doo -doo -doo. Coliseum's battle music is by far some of the best battle music, too. There's a lot of good things about this game. Um. We're gonna call it quits for now, just so I can swap up my team a little bit. So, um, some things to discuss. <clears throat> like I said, we are currently blockaded in this town. Um, there are three exits to this town, and each one of them is covered by a different goon here. So this is Roha, I believe. He has the uh, Quillava that will evolve into Diflosion. We also have um, Verde over here. I think that's green. Verde over here. He has the Bayleaf that will evolve into the Meganium. And down here in the very south part of town, we have... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Azul, I think is his name. And he has Croconaw, which will evolve into Feraligator. I am gonna go I usually don't like to go for the Fire-type one, which is the Quilava, just because of how cliche fire types tend to be. However, in Colosseum, because of how limited my options are as far as um, fire types are, if you've seen the guide if you look at the guidebook, we only have about three or four there's only like uh, there's only one other fire type in the game, aside from uh, the legendary Entei. There's only one other fire type in the game. And it's kind of kind of troublesome when you look at it that way. So we're gonna actually um, we're gonna go straight for uh, Roha here in a second. That's why I'm saving the rest of that uh, pre gem because I want to use the pre gem to open up their hearts a little bit more. Uh, let's see. I don't think they're gonna allow me into the Coliseum, so unfortunately, I actually have nothing else we can really do in here. We've done one battle this thing, so I guess we're gonna, yeah we're gonna we're gonna capture this guy. We're gonna capture this guy's uh, Koalava real quick. Like, let me check my health. Good, 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 good. I'm putting both my glass cannons up front, um, mostly because I'm going to re be a little bit reliant on the reflect to do its job. And we're going to mollywop this fool. Rozo, that's his name. And there's his Quilava, and he's got a Grimer in support. So, Quilava is a pure fire type Pokemon, Grimer is pure poison. Um, Espeon's gonna make real short work of that Grimer, real quick like. I'm gonna get myself a Reflect Up real quick, and there's Garish going off about it being a Shadow Pokemon. Good, good. Uh, Makuhita here. All we have is Shadow Rush on him. We're gonna hit him with that real quick. Um, I'm gonna get a Reflect Up first, just to be on the safer side. Get that going there. 
Wow. So Makuhita is gone already. <laughs> so he is now off the list. He is deceased. That is, um, well then, that's something else. <laughs> I was not expecting to get critted off the rip there by that guy. I'm very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. All right, Espeon, I need you to And the poison hits as well. We are not having a good day here. All right, we're gonna try something here. I can't be asked. Um, I want this Quilava off the field as quickly as possible right now. So we're gonna see if we can snag him turn one. Usually you do not want to do this. Usually you need to weaken the Pokemon exponentially first. But we'll see if this does anything. Oh, cool, sweet, all right. So now we're gonna have a Spoink on the field. Spoink is a psychic type. Uh, Umbreon will make some quick work of that, but I want this Grimer off the field before he poisons the rest of my team. So we're gonna deal with that. And I wanna check something here too. So I just snagged his Quilava right off the rip there. That's beyond hurt by poison, no. Is he in my party? He is in my party now, so I could send him out right now if I wanted to, and I think I'm going to do that. Uh, that way so we can just get Espeon off the field, so Espeon doesn't have to deal with being poisoned anymore. So we'll do that. The lava's coming out. And that'll lower the, that'll open up the door to his, that'll start the opening of the door to his heart of sorts. Point's gonna take a nice clean chunk of health out real quick like. He's gonna use Psy Wave. We'll be using it on the lava. The lava's gonna dom on that. Look at that. Little to no damage done there. Granted he is level 30. <laughs> Alright, so I think we're gonna use Taunt and I'm gonna Shadow Rush him to end this off here. The lava's a cool little dude, I like him. Down with the spoink. And he's done. Cool. So, every Let's Play I do that involves any sort of death or anything, I always somehow die at the very beginning. So, Garrus is going to interrogate this dude, asking about what, what's up with the Quilava there, what they do to it. Um, he's gonna explain that uh, it's a Pokemon that they turned into a fighting machine and they closed the door to its heart, meaning they abused it and all that, so yeah. And he's gonna run off there. So it can be reopened by battling and all that stuff, interesting. So they're talking about Pirate Town, we'll, we'll deal with that here shortly. Oh, oh shit, that's right. So, uh, because Espeon's poisoned, and we're walking with Espeon, Espeon's currently taking damage, so we need to heal that poison ASAP, which luckily we just did. I was wondering what that sound was there. It's been so long, because in most of the modern games nowadays, poison doesn't affect you when you're walking. Um, I think it's something they need to add back in, but that's just me. So we're going to go to the PC here. We're going to dump the... Uh, I say dump. That's a terrible way to put it. Makuhita, unfortunately... He didn't even make it through a battle. He was unfortunately critted off of the battlefield relatively quickly, and we have our first death. <laughs> so let's uh, let's change that up here. I need to fix up the box there, so it's back to box one. Good. There. Okay. Looks like it already flipped something. Nice. And with that, we're gonna say we're gonna heal up our Pokemon team, and then we're going to save and call this an episode because I need to go cry in a corner. That and I got some other stuff I gotta take care of. So yeah, this episode's gonna be a little bit shorter, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I tried to keep up the talking a little more. I realized in the last episode it was a little bit down. <laughs> uh, 
as far as talking went, there were some periods where I wasn't uh, saying anything at all and it was just awkward silence. So hopefully that uh, was fixed here. But anyways, I will catch you all next time. Panda, check in out.